Welcome to the Crown Fountain, Chicago's wettest, wildest interactive public art display. Designed by artist Yao Mei Plenza as a modern interpretation of traditional fountain gargoyles, where faces of mythological beings were sculpted with open mouths to allow water, a symbol of life, to flow out, the Crown Fountain has not only made an impact on Millennium Park where it's located, it's created a lasting impression on the landscape of the city which calls it home. But what is the Crown Fountain and how does it function? Although many have marveled at its strange beauty, few have ever seen how it really works. What goes on inside these towers? How do these faces blow kisses of water and where does it all go? If given the opportunity to peek behind the curtain, as Dorothy did in The Wizard of Oz, would you discover that, like the great and powerful wizard, there's less to the story than meets the eye? Recently, we were given the unique opportunity to explore the fountain from a perspective not many people have seen. From below, inside, and above. Our guide? The man who oversees the operations in Millennium Park, General Manager Neil Spears. It is one of the few fountains in the world that uh, has both a technology aspect to it as well as a water feature. And because of that, it does make it very difficult to maintain. Just the fact that those two elements generally don't work well together, uh, electric power things in water, it, uh, it's, a, it's a balancing act to keep it running year after year. Our tour began at the fountain itself. Among hundreds of frolicking wet children, Neil pointed out that although the fountain is known for encouraging its visitors to splash around the reflecting pool, jostle for position under the water spouts, and stand under the water cascading down its sides, this interactivity was to some degree accidental. I don't believe that was part of the design. The fountain was really created to be a reflecting pool where you'd see basically a reflection of the city. Uh, and it's really become a water park for the city's kids. So uh, just making sure that they're safe is really the biggest thing that we have to contend with. The water flowing through the fountain eventually finds its way into a drainage system consisting of a small trough that runs around the perimeter of its reflecting pool and grates at the base of each tower which leads us to the next stop on our tour. Pump rooms below each tower draw water from a 140-gallon reservoir which sits beneath the reflecting pool. It's here where the water is filtered and then recirculated back through the fountain. Right now we're in the pump room for the North Crown Tower. This pump room basically has the pumps that control the water features, the cascade, the waterfall that uh, goes on while each of the faces is on the screen. The gargoyle feature and the waterfall feature that comes down and basically washes the face away. In all, 12 mechanical pumps keep approximately 11 and a half thousand gallons of water flowing through the fountain every hour. Each one of these pumps is driving the water uh, pretty much all the time, uh, which is what the noise is in the background. This is also where we chlorinate the water because we want to keep it free of any sort of dangerous elements. So we chlorinate it similar to how somebody would chlorinate a regular swimming pool. From there, we followed Neil up a ladder in the middle of the pump room. With the sounds of the water cascading down the glass and the muffled shrieks and laughter of children outside, being inside a crown fountain tower is a truly unique experience. Designed to facilitate ongoing maintenance and repairs, it consists of a series of frames, rods, and brackets engineered to support the 11,000 glass bricks and 148 video screens that make up each structure. Right now we're on the first level uh, inside the, crown, the North Crown Tower itself. Uh, pretty much this is all technical stuff inside. You're talking about power for low voltage LED lights and the video wall itself is what you're gonna see inside the tower. And there's four more levels to go. 
Moving up, we see that the water circulating through the fountain rises via vertical piping system in the middle of each tower. However, as Neil points out, not all of it makes it to the top. This is the pipework for the gargoyle feature, uh, which represents when the faces on the fountain pucker their lips and a gush of water shoots out of their mouth, the spitting feature. Um, and this is, this runs all the way down to the pump room and this is where the water comes up and goes out to uh, the general public. As we reach the upper level, Neil pops open a small door that leads back outside to the roof of the tower. Known as the crow's nest, gauges up here register wind speed and gusts. Important because fountain features must be turned off when it's too windy. The wind affects the fountain flow because if there's too much wind, we lose too much water out of the system. So what it does, the system will actually discontinue the heavy waterfall feature and the gargoyle feature and uh, will preserve the water that way. We climb back down through the tower and head over to our final stop, the Fountains Control Center. Acting as the brains of the entire Crown Fountain, it's here in this small room where the mechanical systems, the HVAC systems, and all of the pump systems are told when to operate. The room also houses high-definition video servers and hard drives that contain 1,000 individual electronic files of the face videos. Computer programs automatically synchronize the images, determine when the faces will pucker and, if weather conditions permit, when to turn the water on and off. They're randomly selected uh, per the artist's intention. The system itself is not repetitive. It doesn't do the exact same thing over and over again. There's about eight different video plans that play in random order. Some have a four minute image, some have a five minute image, some have only a 30 second image. Some have interlaced uh, landscape pictures, some don't. It's a programming miracle that they got it all planned. We left the control room and went back up to ground level, where our tour ended right where it began, in the shadow of the fountain itself. Upon seeing the kids frolicking about in the reflecting pool and the digital images facing us from its dueling towers, it was immediately apparent that peeking behind the curtain of this magnificent creation certainly didn't diminish any of its magic. If anything, it's enhanced the fact that the Crown Fountain is a complicated and fascinating technical and engineering marvel, one that Chicagoans and visitors alike will continue to be fascinated by for years to come. We're just happy that the uh, general public loves it. Every day, you know, everybody brings, uh, brings their children out here and they enjoy the fountain and they enjoy the park and hopefully uh, they enjoy their time here in Chicago.